Okay, so this is the remaining part of the DC current analysis for our um, example two pole converter for uh, two different uh, power flow conditions. Okay, so far what we've been discussing is the uh, cycle by cycle average of the DC link current. Now let's uh, briefly compare the uh, instantaneous DC link current and its uh, average value. Okay, so the top set of waveforms, uh, again they are shown for reference. Um, the red waveform is the actual instantaneous grid current. Uh, actually, this should be marked as just IG, not IG bar, because this is the instantaneous current. And the green waveform is actually a scaled. It's scaled by a factor of 10 so that it can be easily seen together with the current. So this is the duty ratio signal or the control signal VC, but it's 10 times that. Now, the lower plot is the actual instantaneous um, DC link current. So it has the same uh, magnitude as the actual grid current whenever the um, diagonal pairs are on. Okay. Um, and uh, it is zero whenever the uh, either the top two switches or the bottom two switches are on corresponding to the freewheeling interval. Now the um, if I zoom in somewhere near the um, uh, near the peak of the current, um, this is the waveform that you would see. So the grid current is at its uh, near its positive peak somewhere around this point and uh, the corresponding instantaneous DC link current is shown here and this uh, for example this part is exactly same as uh, this part here but this would be the freewheeling interval when the bottom or the top two switches conduct uh, leading to DC link current being zero. Okay. Um, Okay, so as an expression, the DC link current uh, is given by Q effective. So Q is a switching signal and Q effective is simply QA minus QB, where QA and QB are the switching signals for the poles A and B respectively. Okay. So that's a switching signal that times the grid current gives this instantaneous switching DC current. Now, so I show this uh, two lines here. So in the region between these two uh, blue lines, so if you look at the VC, that is, uh, it is actually negative, but the grid current is still positive. The so zero line is this uh, dotted um, uh, black line. So with the green negative and IG still positive, um, what we have is a, is a negative instantaneous DC current. And if you take the average, it will also be negative. Okay. So what happens during this uh, small period is um, um, because VC is negative, QB would be uh, higher than QA, meaning Q would be um, at 1 for longer duration compared to QA. Therefore, Q effective is going to be a negative signal. Okay. So a negative um, minus 1 times IG um, gives uh, this negative switching signal. And when we take the uh, cycle by cycle average in simulation of this red waveform, we get this complete uh, average DC link current, uh, which is what we have been uh, analyzing so far. So that is the um, ID bar with uh, a DC component and this um, uh, twice aligned frequency component that is this uh, green waveform. That's a complete average uh, DC link current. Okay, so and finally if you look at the FFT of this um, instantaneous DC link current, we can clearly see the uh, DC link component and the um, two times aligned frequency component. So this is the DC component at um, zero frequency. So that is the um, 11.24 and um, this is um, so we are shown up to looks like uh, 1200 hertz and this is 200 and this point is really the 120 hertz uh, component and uh, at 120 hertz its value is um, the uh, 13 point um, uh, 5 or so okay. so the match ex matches exactly with what we calculated and there are no other low frequency component and uh, specifically there is no 60 hertz component in this um, DC link current and I'm not showing the very high frequency term so if I extend this all the way to the switching frequency and its multiples so we will see very large components at the uh, switching frequency level okay so then we can uh, go through the case 2 the reverse power flow from the AC grid to the DC side fairly quickly because it's going to be very similar to case, uh, case 1 I mean the methods are uh, identical the values will be different Okay, so we went through this phaser analysis to obtain this uh, required control signal VC of T which is same as the effective duty ratio of T to be this peak of 0.751 and um, a lagging angle with respect to the grid voltage by 3.76 degrees. 
um, so we did that in the in the part two of or part two of this uh, uh, this example okay. um, again using the uh, um, ideal transformer model we can see the id um, id of t the average id of t is simply the Stern's ratio vc or d times the secondary current ig as shown here and uh, d was uh, from the previous slide 0.751 um, minus 3.76 degrees uh, angle and the current now it's um, uh, is in phase opposition to the grid voltage therefore this 180 degrees and also this is at uh, unity power factor again that's that explains this 180 degrees okay so then uh, taking that product we get uh, the average id to be uh, this expression and on simplification we get to the uh, form where we can see the DC component and uh, twice the line frequency component clearly so the DC component as we expected is uh, is negative because now the power flow is into the DC source therefore ID average uh, should be negative um, and we also have this 2F term um, and we will um, look at the the magnitudes um, separately in the next slide Okay, so as before, we can also get the uh, DC link current by looking at the power balance. So the power balance application is to say that the DC power is uh, same as uh, the, um, in an average sense, same as the power process by the secondary port, and that is shown here. And uh, by substituting the numbers, we'll get back the same expression for the DC link current as we got from this ideal transformer-based uh, calculation. Okay, the... Um, um, the DC component is negative because of the power flow into the DC source and its magnitude is given by this peak VC and uh, times um, IG peak divided by 2 times the cosine of uh, the angle between these two sign signals, the VC and the IG. And again that can be checked to be minus 11.02 because cosine is closer to 180 degrees. Okay. Uh, and, and again as a check, if you look at the um, total um, real power processed, the grid power is uh, that is the problem statement so we said 5 kilowatt coming out of the grid not 5 kilowatt into the dc source so so the minus 5000 is the actual pg the active grid power and this component is the loss in this uh, series resistance which is uh, the peak current 29.41 squared over 2 times the resistance 0.1 okay. so that's minus uh, 4957 and if you calculate the power that goes into the dc source uh, so that will be 450 times this ID average, which is uh, minus 11.02. We get um, very close to the same value. And uh, looking at the pulsating current component, its peak value is uh, simply the one half of VC peak times uh, IG peak. Uh, that should come out to be um, uh, this value. This is only the peak value, so, so we don't see the negative sign. Um, this is just the amplitude of a sinusoidal signal. Okay. Um, from the power um, method to calculate the peak value of this pulsating component um, as before this is the uh, magnitude of the complex power processed by the converter over the V sub D. Okay. Now the complex power, the active power component is same as what we calculated here, it is negative and the reactive power component is uh, this part is the QG, it is zero because of unity power factor and this term is QL which is once again this VL peak times the IG peak over 2. Okay. Uh, so again this would, uh, you, you can check that this is also equal to what we calculated uh, before. Okay, so the waveforms for the average uh, DC link current uh, for this case too. Um, so, uh, so here is a zero line um, and uh, the DC component is now negative which is shown by this uh, red line and um, this pulsating component, the brown waveform, at uh, two times the line frequency, as can be seen by comparing the top set, which is the grid current and the um, uh, converter voltage at 60 hertz, whereas uh, clearly this is at uh, 120 hertz, okay, as we expected. And the sum of uh, this DC component and this uh, 2F term, that is this complete um, capacitor current, ID, uh, I'm sorry, the complete uh, DC link current. And uh, because of unity per factor operation, um, this uh, DC link current um, is always negative corresponding to power flowing into the grid, uh, I'm sorry, into the DC source, and it is uh, uh, never um, negative, uh, unlike in the previous example because of the um, lagging power factor. 
the DC link current was predominantly positive but for small portions it was negative uh, and that is because of the lagging power factor but in this case um, the current is always negative um, because of the um, uh, unity power factor but negative power flow direction okay and finally the comparison of instantaneous DC link current with its average value um, so the lower plot corresponds to the DC link currents the red waveform obviously is the switching instantaneous DC link current and um, uh, this magnitude is exactly same as the instantaneous grid current uh, when the uh, diagonal pairs of switches are conducting and during the freewheeling period the DC current is zero so if you zoom in um, somewhere near the peak so in this set of waveform I'm zooming in near the positive peak so somewhere here the positive peak of the grid current as, uh, as seen here the corresponding DC link current uh, would still be negative because during this period the uh, this control signal this VCFT or DFT this is negative therefore the product of this negative with this with the IG gives um, uh, gives this uh, value for the DC link current and um, this region here that is the prevailing period where the uh, DC link current is zero now if I compare the uh, grid current and the DC link current at um, at the negative peak of the grid current say somewhere here then that will be this situation okay so once again the grid current is negative but during this um, period the VC or the DFT this is a uh, positive uh, therefore the um, the product is simply um, um, it's, it's again negative because the current itself is negative and D is positive and that is shown here okay and uh, when you take the cycle by cycle average of this red waveform in simulation we get that um, uh, this average the green waveform the green waveform is the average um, ID average of T okay so which has this negative DC offset and the 2F uh, pulsating component